everyone. Welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux. I'm Vin Stone. That is Jill Brennan. We're watching hello, hello. you. Well, we were in the pre-show, just having a chat like we do. You can join us live on twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast every Wednesday, where we sit down and record this eventually when we get around to it, basically. Yeah. I'm like, oh, fine, <laughs> I guess we'll do a show. I was um, just buying time. Got a couple of things going on. but. The big important one is we get to say goodbye to everyone's favorite browser this week, Jill. Yeah, Internet Exploder is gone. Oh, thank the God. Internet <laughs> no. Exploiter itself, version yeah. 11, is a mere, at time of recording, two hours, <laughs> 28 minutes, and 38 seconds from being deprecated by the mothership. Yes. Like, you got to let it go. Unfortunately, <laughs> this doesn't mean um, it's going to go away anytime soon because yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure you can still find sites <laughs> with animated GIFs on them optimized for Internet Explorer 6. That's probably still a thing. I'm only half joking. But what have I been up to this week? I've been looking at different desktop mail clients, different options, because I was just curious because I kind of settled on evolution and I wasn't happy with it. Also, my lawn guy is furiously trying to get done right now. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> so you might hear a little bit of uh, weed whacking <laughs> in the background. He's uh, on his zero turn mower. Just zzz, and I'm not going to have a great cut this time, but all right. He talked to me beforehand. I understand. He's got things going on in his life, too. I understand this. But <laughs> I, I decided to go back and play with Thunderbird because we talked about Thunderbird last week. So I said, let's check out a nightly build. Let's go ahead and get that set up. And I did. And if you follow me on Twitter, you saw what I said. I said Are we doing this in 2022? Mm. And I wasn't mm -hmm. saying it jokingly with any bluster whatsoever for comedic effect. It was Thunderbird is still not adaptable out of the box to high DPI screens, 4K in 2022, which is just boggling. I don't understand what they have uh, against resolutions over 1440p. And the solution to this is to go into an advanced and ignore like a thing that says don't mess around in here there be dragons <laughs> and change that and it's not a perfect solution because the scaling is jill and i were talking in the pre-show i mean it starts clipping off the ui yeah once you get it to a readable size and i i hear you you're at home you're going we'll just get a bigger 4k monitor to which i'll say jill and i both have 43 inch 4k <laughs> monitors <laughs> yes and it's too small for us to read. It's too small. And the tragic <laughs> state of if you have a 13.5, 14, 15 inch laptop screen, because you know, UHD laptops are not premium devices. These days. It's something you're going to get in the mid range. You wouldn't have a chance. Uh -uh. At all. You'd have to get a magnifier, hook it up. So I was a little down by that. Hopefully some progress is made on that because I like Thunderbird. I do. It does things right, but I did go back and revisit Mailspring. It's nice. got like 99% of the things I want, up to and including out of the box, Jill. It was a little tiny, too. I'm like, oh, it's a little small. Oh. So I went into preferences, and there's just a drag icon. A little nice. slider, and you just drag it. Mm -hmm. No restart. You're like, oh, look, everything's perfectly sized now. But I did run into a bug with, like, really large mailboxes. Now, you at home, you probably don't have these problems because you're normal. You're not running shows and, you know, you're not uh, contracting as freelance. So you don't have a million email addresses with filters and stuff set up with just massive archives. And I'm talking like 16,000 emails stored. And a lot of that is for like business stuff. And uh, I ran into a bug, which has been around with Mailspring since I think at least 2018, 2019, where it's mm -hmm. having an issue syncing with the thing, which wouldn't bother me if it didn't just chew up CPU resources which I don't like. I don't know. If you have an idea, what did you recommend, Jill? Geary? Yeah, Geary and Kmail. Kmail. Geary is very similar to Kmail, the KDE mail client. And Geary, I haven't played around with too much, but I really like Kmail, and I know Geary is very similar to Kmail. Mm -hmm. I'm going to continue playing, and I will definitely play around with both of those. I want to maybe spend some more time this week trying to get Mailspring because another thing it gets right is a completely dark theme. There's oh, no, nice. and Thunderbird almost does it, except for the preview window. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, 
it hits you like that. And uh, Mailspring uh-huh. gets that correct as well. So, yeah, that's my exciting week so far, Jill. I'm, I'm ready. And also, quit okay. scalping the Raspberry Pi for 8 gigs. Those things are almost $200 right now. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. When uh, Ven was telling me about that, I was like, what? Wow, they've really gone up in price. Because I remember I grabbed my first one, Raspberry Pi 400, um, 8 gig with a whole kit for like $120 on Amazon when they were new. <laughs> that's what I was thinking about. You know, yeah. The one I have that's running our stream deck right now came with a case kit, power supply and everything. You know, it was yeah. like 120, 130 bucks. And I had to buy yeah. the kit because you couldn't really find just a Pi 4 8 gig bear at the time. And I was like, well, I'm getting overcharged. I'm getting stuff I don't need, but there's no way I'm paying a hundred. And of course, out of fruits, out of stock. And, I wonder, maybe I'll get a rock chip. That's what I was saying. Maybe, maybe ah. play around, get something a little weird. Maybe get a banana pie. Banana pie. Yeah, yum. All the fruits. <laughs> Orange pie. <laughs> so what have you been up to? Oh, boy. So I had, had fun. Um, I actually came in first on one of our maps on Trackmania. Uh, our Trackmania stream last Friday while playing on my Steam Deck. Woohoo! I'm so happy. <laughs> Trackmania love. So that was I've been, awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Especially like Jill joined us last night and she's like, I'm not playing on that Steam Deck no more, man. Oh, no, 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 no. What it was is my eyes were hurting. So that that is an, an issue because the, the screen is small and I do have to put my face right on it to to play because of my vision issues. But And so yesterday my eyes were pretty tired. But by the end of the stream, I'm like, okay, so let me whip it out. So I managed to come in the last map on it. <laughs> but I will be using it on Friday during our, our time trial finals. <laughs> that should be fun. It is always a good time. We recommend if you like racing, puzzle platforming, come hop in with us. It's open for Twitch subscribers, Patreons, all the information's in the Discord. Handily there. Even last night, mm-hmm. I forgot to put the password on the server because we leave the server open to the public. Yeah, Friday <laughs> that night was fun. Until uh, Tuesday. And yeah. of course, Jill, so what's the name of our group? The Filthy Casuals. Filthy Casuals. Because <laughs> we're not professionals. Sp- not at all. It's <laughs> people playing around, doing our best to get around tracks, and it never fails. The tryhards show up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the ones that, that can kill us by five to ten seconds sometimes. <laughs> it, it's like these, these are the people that pride their ability to outrun middle schoolers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're young people with lots of time on their hands. <laughs> That's what you want to believe, but nobody on the age of 30 is playing Trackmania too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these are people that come home after a long hard day of work. And yeah, yeah, sitting there and pound that. on it. Yeah, true. <laughs> So we're done with this. Let's, we've talked about Trackmania. We've talked about, let's continue that email thread. So, you know, speaking of uh, Thunderbird, uh, last uh, month, me and Van actually talked about a mobile version of Thunderbird coming soon to Android. And I actually had said, I am already established on Gmail and Kmail, K9Mail for Android. Although this announcement does make me think about changing, especially since I use Thunderbird on desktop day to day. Well, now I don't have to worry about making the choice between Thunderbird and K9 Mail on Android because K9 Mail is going to be merged into Thunderbird. (laughs) This is really exciting news. Yes, K9 Mail joins the Thunderbird family and the name itself will change and adopt Thunderbird branding. But before that happens, you know, the developers will bring Canine Mail into alignment with Thunderbird's feature set and visual appearance. But I was really happy about this because I use Canine Mail on mobile and love it. And yes, it never had quite as many features as Thunderbird, but now it will. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> really awesome. Oh, man. The, 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 the natives, they were wee upset. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I went looking around. I did. I did. And, of course, there's a fact where you can get all of the basic questions asked, you know, should I install K9, K9 Mail now? Will this affect desktop Thunderbird? Um, will uh, mm-hmm. Thunderbird, you know, seal my wallet and kick down my back door and run out screeching into the night? 
may or may not have made that one up. You decide. But, <laughs> you know, this way, the canine developer, he's going to get funding. Mozilla gets an email client on Android. New features are going to be coming to the mobile email client. Um, account, auto configuration, you know, all that setup. That's kind of good, I think, because Thunderbird, surprisingly, or unsurprisingly, is really good at that for setting up your accounts. Yeah. Synchronization between Thunderbird's desktop and mobile clients. That's going to be handy. Folder management improvements, message Absolutely. filter support. And mm -hmm. even if you want to stick with K9 for the time being, once they kind of grow together, you know, getting Thunderbird's spam filtering, which is a shining thing in Thunderbird, getting that into K9, that's a value add. That yeah. absolutely is. Absolutely. And yes. Yeah. This is going to sync with Firefox Sync, which is another neat thing I'm surprised people don't know about because, you know, you have your Google accounts that yeah. you, know, you sign in that one time and it remembers all of your URLs and your bookmarks and stuff like that. Firefox has something very similar to that and has the added benefit of not being Google. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and absolutely. it'll keep track of your plugins and everything like that. I use that myself. Uh, you don't have to worry though. K9 will continue to get updates, but, and it's still going to exist in its own listing. For now, be realistic. Eventually, K9 mail is going to go away and it's going to be Thunderbird mail. But I did some digging around and I didn't, I was not familiar with K9 mail. And I, I went through at the forums and just reading through in some various Reddit posts. And it looked like everyone was real happy with K9 mail up until about a year or two ago when they changed it to change the design to look more change like the UI. Gmail. Yeah. And sure. nobody was happy with that. A large vocal, you know, it could have been six people, 20 accounts, who knows, but I saw a lot of people screeching about that. But then again, people might just just like change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I personally liked it. I thought it, you know, I'm like, wow, it looks like my Gmail. <laughs> now. I, I think it was, um, it's very intuitive and easy to use. Mm -hmm. So I like that about K9 mail. Of course it always was, even when they, before that, it, it looked like a Gmail. But merging think, with Thunderbird is really, I think it's a wonderful idea, wonderful thing to do. It, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see what happens, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, I want a good email client. Uh, I use Gmail on Android because I'm on Android, my, you know, when in Rome yeah. type thing. Yeah. <laughs> Your Google again, account. It's, a, it's the same mentality as if I was stuck using Windows, I'd probably just be using Outlook. It's like, well, I'm already here, might as well, right? Yeah. And uh, but you know, having a very good viable option as opposed to a not very good yet still viable option would be a bonus. I hope it stays as just an email client, though. I don't want chat, I don't want calendar. And then some people were a little upset about that. I was reading on Reddit <laughs> that they wanted Something that I could almost get behind is uh, a mobile version of Thunderbird that would be viable, say, on a tablet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, maybe not, it yeah. really wouldn't work on your six-inch devices, yeah. but like 10-inch device, you'd get away with it in uh, landscape mode. And, well, that would be I mean, nice. Hey, it's mm -hmm. something you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're both going to play with it. Let's oh, be honest. So. Yeah, we are. <laughs> That's for sure. I'll, I'm I'll looking it, forward to I, um, it. <laughs> I'll see if it chokes. Trying to import all my <laughs> IMAP folders. Uh, yes, because all the accounts, all the things, all the bringing accounts. them all in. Yeah, yeah, I was talking about that in our Discord. I'm like, I don't hoard anything incorrect. I hoard email. Yeah, hoard <laughs> I email. guess that, that is true. We all kind of do. <laughs> the, the, uh, and I've had it happen. I've went, you know, I didn't necessarily, I've never chased inbox zero. Haven't. But there was a point, I'm like, I'll never, you know, these emails are eight years old. I'll never use them for anything. Mm. Wiped them out. Maybe four, maybe five months later. And I, it, it's, I knew that email existed before I wiped it. That had an answer <laughs> to a problem that I needed the information from. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. You don't want to get rid of your, yeah. Right. I have everything too, Vin, since uh, we had webmail <laughs> <That's, laughs> way back uh, in the day. <laughs> I've been good about rolling my IMAP servers. I've hosted my own email. <laughs> She's probably since 2003. Yeah, yeah, so, right. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I do have webmail as well because I got Gmail addresses and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, but hey, I look forward to playing with it. Firefox, let's do the Mozilla thing because I want to talk about this. Yeah. Cookies. Because you know, foxes love cookies. I mean, <laughs> 
we are all cookie monsters after all. We love our 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 big uh, bowl of cookies. <laughs> that was a joke because Firefox <laughs> is going to deny cookies to the fox. It's <laughs> yes. going to protect them from cookies. <laughs> that is right. Total cookie protection. Oh, it but it's just going to make cookie more cookie protection. boxes, more cookie bowls that are sandboxed. It is responsible. <laughs> Bite-sized, instead of gorging on cookies, we will not have to worry about high blood pressure in our fox yeah. once this takes place. Uh, yeah, this is Firefox's strongest privacy protection to date, confining the cookies to the sites where they were created. I know, strange idea, right? So that's going to prevent tracking companies from using these cookies to track your browsing from site to site. <gasps> La gasp, well, wonders never cease. And, you know, this is they've been working on this stuff for a long time. Yeah. You know, as Jill alluded to, Separate cookie jar for each website you visit. Brilliant idea, because in theory, it's going to allow cookies to function without being to being able to, you know what, track you. Yeah, which you know, is what they get up to on the back <laughs> with the ads and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, just a thing for my fellow brothers and sisters, the privacy enthusiasts in the audience. I mean, if you're into mm -hmm. that, go for it. I do want to point this out. I was reading over on Hacker News. I saw this show up yesterday. Uh, a couple of people said that this will absolutely break Zendesk integration on the Jira. So mm. there's your heads up. That's something you got to go back and uh, play around a little bit with. And um, single sign-ons. I got mixed signals from that. Some people were saying it was breaking wow. single sign-on setup. So maybe go try it. Yeah. Well, I think that it's awesome that this is really, you know, turned on by default and, you know, I, I've kind of known the last few years, this is eventually what Firefox wants to do with with the cookies. And, uh, you know, now you don't have to go into the privacy and security settings to customize your cookie options. And Yeah, you honestly, do when things don't work. Well, when things don't work. Yeah, that that is true. And but that that is always an option. You can go back into the cookie options and adjust them as needed. And I like this also because now using Firefox by default, I don't have to always remember to use a new private window, which is nice. <laughs> it's quite convenient. And, you know, it's it's really moments like this that I want the open source Firefox browser to dominate the web once again. <laughs> Just think if we all get together and we team up, we can get to like 7% market share. With we oh. <laughs> yes <laughs> it's so sad it, it is, is so, so sad depressing because if you've been tracking it and following it and using firefox long enough you, you saw it when nobody used firefox it was you know you mm -hmm. and a couple of your nerd friends were like hey this thing's kind of cool this, this is awesome neat. yeah <laughs> then you got the entire like victory arc of like yes it is the dominant web browser no one uses ie it's like 20 percent, whatever everybody is and here we are now we're everything's chromium this and that mm -hmm. and firefox is sharing market share with microsoft edge yeah like, uh, uh, maybe the ship can get turned around things like this yeah uh, things like this get people interested change like hey yeah you know even back in the day it was simple things and yes i know you could ring up opera when i say this but mm -hmm. <laughs> blocking pop-ups and tab browsing opera yeah. That was you know, like, exactly Opera did that too. Yeah, but nobody used Opera. People used Firefox and that got people on board. Yeah. So, um, you know, things like this. Uh, this is going to get people talking. Like, hey, do you value your privacy? And if they do. And, you know, mm -hmm. as much as I don't like giving credit when credit's doing sometimes, especially when it comes from the fruit company, Apple, uh, you know, what they did with Safari. With yeah, that WebKit. Share, yeah. That messed up like business models. Mm -hmm. So similar disruption. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if it's necessarily the same technology, same way they went about it, but I like a good shakeup, especially when it comes down to tracking people because, Hey, you don't necessarily need Amazon. Amazon's like, Hey, did you buy a towel? Yes. You know what? You're going to get Amazon recommendations for towels for the next <laughs> month. Every site. Yeah. <laughs> But I already bought a towel Amazon. He was a buy a more. I mean, buy yeah, more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there is that. Up next, uh, Europe 76. Oh, yeah. So System 76 is going to have a new distribution center in Europe. And it's also working on a new launch keyboard. 
Uh, but the System76 will start uh, their distribution of its launch open source mechanical keyboard from its European center. As they say, that is a lot easier to do than to start the distribution of their laptops and desktops because of restrictions and higher cost and legalese. So they still have to work that out. But they can start you know, sending out uh, their launch keyboards. And their new keyboard is actually called the Launch Lite. I think that was a perfect name. And the Launch Lite will be actually a 65% keyboard minus function keys and a USB 3.2 hub. But it will be smaller and cheaper than the current launch keyboard, which is $285. So that'll be great. I, I had a feeling uh, System76 was going to create a lower cost keyboard for us. But the big news here is here is now they have a distribution center. This is exciting news. It, it shows but so much growth. they're planning on one. They don't yeah. One. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's still in the works. <laughs> this all comes from an interview uh, with Jeremy Solar. Solar, uh, Tweakers. Yeah. The interview is in Dutch, and I'm not going to put anyone through me mangling Dutch, but best I can make of that, <laughs> this is reasonably accurate. Uh, and, you know, System76 currently uh, supplies products in Europe, but, you know, it doesn't have its own distribution centers in Europe. I mean, you yeah. got to get it from the U.S., and that involves... High shipping and import shipping costs. Shipping is horrible, right? yeah. <laughs> Basically, what I'm telling everybody knows on the other side of the pond, System 76 is expensive, yo. And mm -hmm. um, that's not necessarily going to change just yet. According to this, we should say, uh, Netherlands.posten.com. It'll be in the show notes. Uh, what it looks like is System 76 is kind of taking the page out, you know, according to Jeremy, uh, doing it right. You know, starting yeah. small in order to see where the gotchas are. Yeah. And uh, I just love the name, Launch Light. I think that's a perfect name for a 65% keyboard. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> and I've been I've been kind of waiting for, for them to come out with another keyboard because I wanted to grab this new iteration. And yeah, so this is just very exciting that we have System76 uh, going to be able to sell their computers and laptops in Europe. That's just going to make it so much nicer for our European friends and cheaper costs. <laughs> I mean, I think it's fantastic. Great news. Unless you're a tuxedo computer or someplace like, like, Hey, uh, yeah. yeah. True. <laughs> oh, man. Interesting to read. Good to know. All right. So that's going to do that. Let's get into a slice of pie. And we're going to be talking about a pie. You can barely see. Mm. Look how big it gets. Oh, it's a berry that's, pie. Yeah. About pie definitely berries. berry. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever suffer from Dak Berries? <laughs> hmm, what does that stand for, Ven? Digital audio <laughs> converter berry pie? <laughs> sure. That sounds better than what I was thinking. No, I'm talking about adding an audio jack to the Raspberry Pi 400, which Joe was able to remind me that, no, this thing does not have any type of analog out on it. You have to use Wi-Fi. Well, not necessarily Wi-Fi, but Bluetooth or something like that, right? Yeah, you've got to use a Bluetooth audio d device, uh, or or the it has two micro HDMI ports, but no uh, um, audio port there, no uh, phone phono jack. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's yeah. unfortunate. But <laughs> this is going to fix it. You can just shove an open circuit board on the back, Jill. And it's got a that's cool. 3.5 <laughs> connects to all your GPIO pins. And it's kind of neat, man. Powered directly from the GPIO header. So you don't have to plug anything extra into it. The SNR is acceptable for something in the $20 price range. Uh, fair warning, though. This does not yet work on kernel 515. But mm. if you're wondering like me, you're like, what about that jack? Can I use it to send the audio back in? Yes, it is T-R-R-S. So... How much would you pay for this, Jill? Hundred bucks? Oh boy! Actually, uh, uh, honestly, for something like this to um, get a nice uh, audio jack on here, probably you know thirty to fifty bucks. <laughs> that would make me happy, but it's cheaper than that. <laughs> it's under twenty. <laughs> I'm going to say it's around twenty. Um, we're looking at about seventeen pounds. That's including VAT. So I didn't even see a place to get it stateside yet. 
which is kind of interesting. Mm. Like not not the good kind of interesting, but okay. definitely interesting the other way around. Do you, what I want, what I want to see is, and I've looked for them. If you know about it, send an email, leave a comment on this video on YouTube or Odyssey or wherever else it's uh, distributed that I might get a notification. I'm looking for a pie hat that has ADAT. Oh, nice. That that would make mm. a very interesting thing, like a couple of ADAT ports, like two, possibly three that can also do SMOX, SPDIF, and all that. Mm. So, yeah, that's what's really nice about this is you also don't have to rely on US, USB dongles for sound uh, right. um, as well and uh, take up a, a much-needed port on the Raspberry Pi 400. And this is actually very timely because last week we talked about the Orange Pi 800, which is also an Orange Pi in a keyboard, just like this one. But it also has an audio uh, jack and uh, even has a little speaker on it. <laughs> so that's something that we could use in on the Raspberry Pi. And I have a feeling in the next iteration of the Raspberry Pi 400, we're, we're going to get that. I'm sure we're going to get an easier way to do audio on the Pi, or they're going to inter integrate this hat. <laughs> so, well, definitely something like cool. this. Um, yeah, because you do lose all your GPIO pins. Uh, uh, that is true. That is true. Although, you got to make that decision. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, everyone. That's going to put us right at 30 minutes, despite my gardener's best effort. Um, it's been a while. It's been a while. We got to yeah. bounce out of here. I'm going to queue up some music, roll some credits, and you can listen to the dulcet tones of grass being slaughtered. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we have all our wonderful patrons, and we've even got Linux Gnuru in one of our wonderful patrons who's been here for a very long time here at Linux Gamecast, and he works at System76. Cool. We love you. <laughs> we love all our System76 uh, members and viewers, including Alex. He's also in chat. But we got our executive producers, Aldius, Barbrandt, Scott M, Atomic Ass. We have our advisor, uh, Artharin. We have our Chicago people <laughs> and our sea monsters. We ran out of steam. We got all our sea monsters. We got our death notes <laughs> below that, man. It's not a hierarchy. Everybody's equal in Discord and I gave yeah. it sharelings helping us Absolutely. make this each and every week. Episode 331 <laughs> is about to wrap up and we do thank you. Oh, we love in. you all. All our beautiful patrons Have a great and a lot of you week. in chat. Throw a ping one at somebody. It yeah. <laughs> Jill endorses throwing penguins. 